All right, uh, we're here in Jerusalem, and uh, I have a very special guest with me today, Avi Lipkin. Great to have you. Well, Great to have you. And I, I, I've been watching your YouTube videos, and people pass them around all the time, and I just, uh, I love to listen to you speak. You're funny, you're humorous, but uh, very informative, and being a Christian pastor, we learn so much uh, from your teachings, and just want to say thank you so much for what you do. Thank you, and uh, we are in this together. Amen. I guarantee you that's true. Amen. Avi, there's a lot going on. Today's Jerusalem Day. Okay. Right. Um, and it's great to be here. It's a blessing to be in Jerusalem. Um, but there's a lot going on in the Middle East. And let's face it, not just pol politically, but militarily um, and jihad. This would be a, a huge question, but taking a look at with what ISIS is doing in Syria and in Iraq, slaughtering Christians, and but it seems like they're gravitating toward Israel. Is there major concerns here about ISIS or is there bigger concerns, a bigger picture that people here, uh, the Israeli government, Benjamin Netanyahu and those in the Knesset are more worried about? Well, uh, as you know, uh, we are very concerned about the Iranian nuclear project but I'm going to share things. Uh, you could uh, put them in the uh, terminology of uh, breaking news. Okay, I like that. Um, we're dealing with a country called Iran, which is 50% Iranian okay. and 50% minorities. So, for example, in Iran, you have Kurds. Okay. And you know, the Kurds are in Syria, Iraq, Turkey, Iran, and even part of what used to be the Soviet Union. Um, the Kurds are 20 million people. Wow. And, uh, I did not know that. It, and they don't have a state yet. They will have a state, I believe, and I pray, because the Jews and the Kurds have always gotten along very well. Uh, now, uh, there's a little story here, which nobody's talking about in the media yet, but it will come out very soon. Maybe, maybe before you get back to the States, even, in a few days. But the Iranian government uh, rules over the Kurds, Azeris, you've heard of Azerbaijan to the north. Yes. The Azeris are an ethnic group linked to the people in Azerbaijan. All these borders were drawn up by the imperial powers in World War I. Um, the Azeris want to link up with Azerbaijan. The Kurds want to link up with Kurdistan. Uh, you've got Arabs who live in Persia, in Iran, that are not happy with the Iranian rule. We have to remember, Iranians and Turks are not Arabs. Iranians and Turks are Indo-European, and they don't speak Arabic, and they hate the Arabs. So there is a whole area in southwest Iran, which is Arab. Then you've got another group in the east of Iran called Baluchis. And the Baluchis are uh, related to the Pakistani peoples, and they're Sunnis. Okay. And they hate the Shiite regime in Iran. Right. And you've got Zoroastrians, and you've got, you've got other groups. There are many groups that are not happy with the Ayatollah-type regime in Iran. Now, what happened last week was a Kurdish girl in a town in northern Iran, in the Kurdish area of Iran, was, uh, worked in a hotel, and some high Iranian official uh, said she's mine, to rape her, to violate okay. her. Okay. She jumped out of the fourth story window and committed suicide. Oh, Lord. So now what is happening is we are seeing a revolution taking place. It's not in the media. The Kurds of Iran are now rising up in revolt against Iran. And what's happening is, this is a domino effect. The Azeris are joining. Baluchis are joining. Um, I don't know if I should say it or not, but people who know, know that there are special ops on the ground in Iran from the U.S., from Britain, from Israel, uh, to topple the Iranian regime. Are we talking about regime change? Yes, we're talking about regime change. Uh, so it could be that the whole nuclear project will be stopped eventually by a new government which will come to power after the overthrow of the Ayatollah regime. This is something that uh, your your church people should know about. Yeah, but, well, 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 you're saying right now, or that there has been periodically, there is special U.S. Delta Force type special ops on right. the ground in Iran. And Israeli Mossad and Israel. SAS from Britain. And there are all kinds of attacks going on in which uh, Iranian revolutionary guards, the Basiji, they're known as the Basiji or the Pazdaran. These people are being ambushed, they're being attacked. It's like a, co a covert war going on in, in Iran right now. Wow. And if you heard of the uh, Arab Spring yes, in February yes, 2011, yes. we are now going to be witnessing in the coming days a Persian or Iranian Spring. 
Um, the Iranians are, the Persian Iranians are only 50%, and they're, they're the biggest group, but they're suppressing all the other 50%, which are minorities. Because it's, they're, led, they're led by the Ayatollah Ali Khomeini right. and Hassan Rouhani and that crowd. Right. So, so you're saying that there isn't a special op going on right now, right. doing some assassinations, taking out some of the leaders, whatever. Ambushing their buses and right. uh, setting up ambushes. And it's quiet because that's not being reported. I mean, you're, you're right. telling me something. I, I mean, I'm studying the news every day. I don't know right. that. Right. And the other thing is this. You're saying they're also doing a Trojan horse thing or kind of, kind of stirring up the people. To right. Sort of what, to be quite honest, that's what Russia's doing in Ukraine. Let's right. be honest. Right. So that's, what you, that's going on. Right. So when do you see the... Iranian spring started well it already started but it hasn't been covered because there's very little contact uh, with people on the ground in Iran okay. and what about far as news agency do they cover they this? they're on the other side they, they won't they? talk about okay. it yeah okay. obviously okay. they're trying to cover it up they're trying to keep a lid on things all right but I, I will add another thing also and this is one of the things I've been emphasizing over the last few uh, years actually especially the last few months and that is that the Shiites including the Iranian government are 15% of the Muslim world. The Sunnis are 85%. Wow. Conclusion, the Shiites are outnumbered. Uh, Bashar al-Assad uh, in Syria is outnumbered. The Hezbollah in Lebanon are outnumbered. The Shiites in, in Iraq, they outnumber the Sunnis in their specific country. Um, but between all of these different Shiite groups and the Houthis in Yemen, yeah. eventually the Sunnis are gonna win because all these Sunni groups are getting more volunteers, more soldiers than the Shiites are getting. So Shiite Islam is, I predict, I'm predicting, is going to be ended pretty soon. ISIS will come to the fore. Uh, there will be many groups fighting ISIS. I think at some stage then the Muslims self-destruct, you know, in other words, the Sunnis fight each other. Uh, and at some stage blow up the oil wells, which is a no-no for the one world government. Right. And then at some stage, the world's going to put its foot down and say, you know, this whole Islam thing cannot be We're tired of this. Yeah, we're tired of this. And they're going to kill the king of Saudi Arabia, you know, the ISIS people. Yeah. They think Do you they, think they will? They are. King so Salman? They, they, I mean, I know they would. They, 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 they tried said, to assassinate. They said the whole family's corrupt, the family has to go, and pure, pristine uh, Islam should be imposed. And one of the things they're saying is that the, they're going to destroy the black stone. <laughs> no, we don't if you blow up the Mecca, you, if, you, if they blow up the black stone, we don't have to do anything, right? Just sit back and let it happen. What does God say in the Bible? He says, "You be silent. I'm going to do the fight." Yeah, for that's you. right. That's right. We yeah. get ourselves in a way too much, don't we? Yeah. Um, and you know, uh, wow. Okay, I just want to say, wow. The Iranian Spring, then the Iranian in what you're calling the Iranian Spring, might be the uh, beginning of the destruction of Shiite. Muslim. Right. Okay. After 1,400 years of struggle between the Shiites and the Sunnis. Which is really what it's been. And and ISIS is really the uh, henchmen. They're right. the first ones out. Right. But they'll be the first ones down uh, yeah. if, if Iran starts to fall apart. Yeah. Because where will the money come from? Uh, well, there's lots of money because of the oil and lots of investments, you know, from different powers that want to have different interests. I would say the richest of all the Saudis, you know, but in the end, the Saudis are going to fall too. Okay, but speaking about money coming from, we got news that the United States special ops on the ground in right. Syria, right. Delta Force, went in and killed one of ISIS's leaders, uh, Abu Sayyaf. Abu Sayyaf. Okay. Now, Sayyaf in Arabic means the sword. Wow. Abu Sayyaf means he's the father of the sword, which is a, a very yeah, popular uh, nom de guerre. You know, or, or name of uh, war, the person, you know, military leader might have. By the way, I'm changing the subject completely. Okay. I don't know if you remember the uh, bombing in New York City uh, of the World Trade Center. In 93? In 93. Yes. 93. Yes. The engineer who made the bomb, his name was Ramzi Yusuf, he, he got away after the bombing in 19, went to the Philippines, and he formed a, 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 a ministry <laughs> terrorism group called Abu Sayyaf. And what? Yeah. This guy's name was the name yes. of the group? And there might be some connection between them, though I'm not sure. Abu Sayyaf is a generic name generic for the father name. of the sword. Okay. And Abu Sayyaf today is wreaking havoc in the Philippines, which is a Christian country, and the Muslims are fighting there. And one of the things now, you have to hold your seat because you, you might not believe anything I'm saying after this, but the Oklahoma City bombing, Yeah. Terry Nichols and uh, Timothy McVeigh. McVeigh yeah. was executed. Yes. They trained with Ramzi Yusuf of the Abu Sayyaf organization in, in the Philippines in, uh, you know, until That's the bombing in 1995. 
So, time out. <laughs> Folks, don't go nowhere. Watch part two. P part two, all right? <laughs> Praise God. <laughs>